Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this video I'm going to show how to find area of moment of inertia. Consider a T-section having flange and web both of 120 mm and 30 mm about XX axis passing through the center of gravity of the section. First I will draw the X and Y axis. Now let me draw the figure. This is the flange and the web, the base of the flange is 120 mm and height is 30 mm. And web has 120 mm height and 30 mm base. Now let me first explain you in brief. Here our intention is to find out the area of moment of inertia of the T-section about X-axis and Y-axis. But to find out that we first need to find the area of moment of inertia about X-axis and Y-axis of flange which I name as Section 1. And the area of moment of inertia about X-axis and Y-axis of web which I name as Section 2. We are doing this because the area of moment of inertia of T section about X axis is sum of area of moment of inertia of section 1 about X axis and area of moment of inertia of section 2 about X axis. Similarly area of moment of inertia of T section about Y axis is given has the sum of area of moment of inertia of section 1 about Y axis and area of moment of inertia of section 2 about Y axis. Now let me start solving. Finding the area of Section 1 which is base multiplied by height equals 120 mm multiplied by 30 mm which equals to 3600 mm square. Section 2 which also base multiplied by height here base is 120 mm and height is 30 mm which is also equals to 3600 mm square. Total area of T section equals to sum of area of section 1 and area of section 2. Which is 3600 mm square plus 3600 mm square which equals to 7200 mm square. Therefore the area A1 or section 1 equals 3600 mm square. Area A2 or section 2 equals 3600 mm square. An area A that is total area of T section equals 7200 mm square. Since we found out the areas now we will find out the distance of center of gravity of each area from X and Y axis. Finding the distance of center of gravity of section 1. CG or center of gravity of section 1 may lie approximately in center here where the red dot is shown. Let us now find the distance of CG from Y axis which I denote as X1, since the center point of CG of the section 1 lies at half distance, therefore its distance is 120 mm divided by 2 which is equal to 60 mm. And the distance of CG of section 1 from X axis which I denote as Y1 is equals to 120 mm plus half of 30 mm which is equal to 135 mm. Similarly we will find out the CG or center of gravity of section 2 or area 2 which will lie approximately here. The distance of center of gravity of section 2 or area 2 from Y axis which I will denote as X2 and it is also be equal to 60 mm, since the center of both the sections lies in same line. And the distance of center of gravity of section 2 from X axis which I denote as Y2 is equal to half of 120 mm which is 60 mm, because it lies exactly in half of its height. Since we found out the center of gravity of section 1 and center of gravity of section 2 and also we know areas of section 1, section 2, and T section, now we can find out the center of gravity of T section which approximately lies here. Finding the distance of center of gravity of T section for finding the distance of center of gravity of T section from Y axis we will use the following relationship. 
this relationship says the product of area of T section and its center of gravity distance from Y axis will be equal to the, the sum of products of area of section 1 and its center gravity distance and area of section 2 and its center of gravity distance from Y axis. Now let us substitute all the values. This 7200 is the area of T section, into, X bar is the distance of center of gravity of T section which we are finding out, equals to area of section 1 which is 3600 mm square into its CG distance from Y axis plus area of section 2 which is also 3600 mm square into its CG distance from Y axis, which is 60 mm. After rearranging the equation, we will get X bar equals to 60 millimeters. Similarly for finding Y bar, we will use the same relationship which we used before, but this says that the product of area of T section and its center of gravity distance from X axis is equal to the sum of products of area of section 1 and its distance of center of gravity from X axis plus the area of section 2 and the distance of center of gravity from X axis. Let us substitute the values in the above equation, 7200 is the area of T section into Y bar is its distance of center of gravity from X axis, is equal to the area of section 1 which is 3600 mm square into 135 mm which is its distance of center of gravity from X axis plus the area of section 2 which is also equal to 3600 mm square into 60 mm which is its distance of center of gravity from X axis. After rearranging the equation and solving it we will get Y bar equals to 97.5 mm. Since we found out all the required things, we can now start with finding moment of inertia of section 1 about X axis. Area of moment of inertia of section 1 about X axis, is equal to its center of gravity of section 1 plus area of section 1 into the square of its distance of center of gravity from the of center of gravity of T section. Let us write the about equation in terms of symbols. I will denote moment of inertia of section 1 as Ixx, is equal to center of gravity of section 1 which I denote as Ig1, plus, a1 which is the area of section 1 into H1 square is the distance of center of gravity of section 1 from the center of gravity of T section. The center of gravity is given as base into length cube divided by 12. Remaining is same as above. Let us substitute the values, the base of section 1 is 120 mm into height is 30 mm and it is raised to cube. Whole divided by 12 plus 3600 is the area of section 1 into 135 minus 97.5. Here 135 is the distance of CG of section 1 from X axis and 97.5 is the distance of CG of T section from X axis. Difference of both gives H1 raised to square. After computing above equation we will get moment of inertia of section 1 is equal to 5332500 mm raised to 4. We found out the area of moment of inertia of section 1 about x axis similarly we will find out the area of moment of inertia of section 2 about x axis. Let us write down the formula for section 2. For section 2 base is 30 into height which is 120 raised to cube, the whole divided by 12. Plus 3600 is the area of section 2 into 97.5 minus 60, here 97.5 is the distance of CG of T section from X axis and 60 is the distance of CG section 2. Difference of both gives H2, raised to square. Therefore after computing we will get moment of inertia of section 2 is equal to 9382500 mm raised to 4. 
since we found of area of moment of inertia of section 1 and section 2 about x axis now we can find out the area of moment of inertia of t section about x axis therefore the area of moment of inertia of entire t section about x axis is given as sum of area of moment of inertia of section 1 and section 2 about x axis which is nothing but 533 Two five zero zero plus nine three eight two five zero zero, which is equal to one four seven one five zero 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 mm raised to four. Therefore, the area of moment of inertia of T section about x axis is found out. Now, similarly, we will find out the moment of inertia of T section about y axis. This time we will not find the area of moment of inertia of section 1 and section 2 about y axis separately. Since we already know that area of moment of inertia of t section about y axis is equal to sum of moment of inertia of section 1 and section 2 about y axis, let us substitute the formulas and values here only. Inertia of section 1 and section 2 is given as here IG1 and IG2 are the center of gravity of section 1 and section 2. A1 and A2 are their areas, and H1 and H2 are the distance of center of gravity of section 1 and section 2 from center of gravity of T section. Let me substitute the formulae for IG1 and IG2, which is base into height cube divided by 12. For section 2 base is 30 mm and height is 120 mm. Plus area of section 2 which is 3600 into 0, since center of gravity of section 2 and T section lies in same line therefore the difference of them is 0. Raised to square. Plus, for section 1 base is 120 into height is 30 raised to cube divided by 12, plus area of section 1 which is 3600 into 0, since center of gravity of section 1 and T section lies in same line therefore the difference of them is 0. Raised to square. After computing we get, 432, 0, 0, 0, 0, plus 270,000. Therefore the moment of inertia of T section about Y axis is found out, which is equal to 4590000 mm raised 4. Therefore the moment of inertia of T section about X axis is equal to and moment of inertia of T section about Y axis is equal to Friends thank you for watching this video, hope you understood it. If you have any questions or suggestions then feel free to comment and please support my effort by subscribing my channel also like and share my video with your friends.